Hello guys and welcome to part three of a free part tutorial series that I've been putting together on this little Instagram scene of mine that I'm kind of like breaking down into a tutorial. So this is part three, like I said, you can check the description below for part one and two, so all of this will make more sense. Um, also this blend file is included on my Patreon, which you can also find in the description below. So um, let's get into it. Okay, so now in this part three, we're gonna finish off our little materials and render out our final animation. So you can remember from part two, we kind of touched on some of the materials like um, the bread and the toast. And we also added placeholder materials for all of these items. So if you haven't already done that, just watch the first two parts. But once again, just make sure you're in Eevee as a render engine here under your render settings and ambient inclusion and screen space reflections. Those are two very important ones to enable. Once you've done that, we can go Shift A, go to our light options, add in an area light. G, Z, bring the sky up. We go to our light settings. We're gonna make the power 450 watts and then come to the size here and make it 1.5. And then go S, X and scale it along the X about the length of the toaster, maybe even a little bit more. Go to your right orthographic view, then rotate this guy up and forward, and then hit G to move it behind the toaster. If we now go into a camera view and we hit Z and go render it, we can now see we have this nice rim lighting on the edge here, which just kind of gives it some depth. So let's quickly duplicate this light in our right orthographic view, move it up, rotate it forward like this, and then bring the power down to 300. And then we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate the sky, bring it in here, rotate it forward. And this one we're gonna make 120. And now we have those lights set up. In fact, I might just bring this guy to the right to the left, rotate it in, duplicate him, and bring in one like this. So just some really basic lighting here, and you can mess around with it as much as you want to. I'm just gonna leave it at this for now. So what we can do now is, once we have our lighting set up here, is we can go into our shading workspace. Now as you can remember from part two, so make sure obviously you're in rendered view here. In part two, we already kind of added the materials to the bread and the toast. So what we need to do now over here is just work on these placeholder materials that we added in. So you can remember previously we added in just placeholder materials. We gave them some color for the viewport display, but we haven't actually added any, um, done anything to the principal shader. So in our shading workspace, make sure you're in rendered mode in your camera view here. And we're gonna start editing some of these materials. So obviously the first one we're gonna start with is the chrome here on the text on the toaster. A lot of items here have chrome, so just come to the principal shader and drag that value up to one, and then bring that roughness down a bit. So that's our chrome material pretty much done. Then we're gonna to go to the toaster material itself. Now this one, you can go with anything. I'm gonna kind of go with a bit of a robin's egg blue, bring the roughness down, and you can also come here and increase the clear coat up as well and you can work on that material as much as you want, add scratches, anything you want. I'm just gonna keep it real simple. We're then gonna select the floor material here that we added a placeholder for. We're gonna make that metallic, about 9.5, and then we're going to, sorry, 1.95, and then we're gonna give this kind of like a purplish material and bring down that roughness just a tad bit. So something like that looks really cool, I really like it. And then we're gonna select the background around here and now it just has a obviously it just has a principal shader but what we're going to do to make this look really cool is we're going to grab our principal shader here just drag it over to the side and i'm going to go with kind of like a dark kind of blue like this which doesn't look really good at the moment but if we go shift a and we search and we get a mix shader we plug this into the top socket here and then we go shift a search and get an emission so get an emission shader then we're gonna plug the emission into the bottom socket here. And let's make this emission kind of like a purplish kind of color. And let's make the strength of it something like five. And then let's plug the shader into the surface here. Obviously it's gonna look quite horrible. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a node to mix those two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna get what's called a Fresnel node or Fresnel, however you wanna say it. We're gonna plug the factor here into the factor of the mix shader. And now it's gonna use that to kind of mix these two together. Now right off the bat, it doesn't look too fantastic, but what we can do is we can come in here to this IRR value and kind of drag it around till we get some changing effects. So this is completely up to you. So I'm gonna drag this up or down to 0.81. It might be a little bit different for you. But what I find, it creates this really cool looking effect. 
and it just looks really awesome. So that's how I made my backdrop and or background and you can scale this plane at the back kind of move it around and try kind of getting different results it's really up to you um, to make this your own kind of scene so this is kind of really how i made my original one just kind of creating that nice um, background effect you can kind of rotate this guy as well like that and that can also create some nice effects even rotate it like this it really is um, a lot of things you can do with this so that's just a real really little simple little shader trick so here we have it so if we just actually hit the spacebar to play this animation we can see obviously we have our toast here now in this tutorial i just added some really basic materials um, just some textures but what you can do is obviously just bring down the roughness for these materials and i would recommend that you get something like a bump node or a bump map or sorry bring the roughness up get something like a bump map a roughness map and a normal map to kind of add some texture to this bread because right now it looks really flat but this isn't going to be a in-depth materials tutorial for this this is just kind of to show you the tutorial so you can also grab the untoasted version of the bread that we made so it's this guy here and also just bring that roughness up a bit for both of these materials the bread and the crust so it doesn't look so overly reflective once again it could really do with a bump some bump information like a, a bump map or a normal map so that is pretty much how I made my original. Like this one isn't near as um, polished as my original. This is just kind of to show you guys the tutorial. So let's just go back to our layout here and um, let's just hit the spacebar and see what this looks like. So you can see this is our loopable little toast animation. In fact, if we just hit Z and go into um, material preview, we can see it a little bit quicker. So let's just have a look. So this is our final animation. The little thing comes down, puts the toast in our toaster, it gets toasted, it pops back up, it gets taken out, and then a fresh slice of bread is put in that looks exactly like our original, and the whole thing is completely loopable. So let's just quickly do a little test render here before we get too into it. So I'm just gonna get a um, frame here that I like. I'm gonna go render, render image. And once we like this and we've gotten all the bugs out, we'll, I'll show you how to render this out as a final animation. So there you can go, that looks pretty cool for now. I feel like I'm ready to render this out. So you can work on it as much as you want. And um, even this thing here, I was just thinking about it. You could definitely come in here and bring this guy up so it's not gonna penetrate. So this thing is coming down a little bit too low, so it'd be actually penetrating the toaster. But I'm not gonna worry about that little deal, detail too much. You guys can kind of sort that out. I still think it looks pretty awesome. Okay, so I'll quickly show you how we um, rendered this out as a final animation. So let's go to our output settings here. We're just gonna go down to our output folder, go to our desktop, hit accept. Simply go to your file format, make it an FFmpeg video, go to your encoding, and you can make the container here an MP4, and that's done. Now this destination file will be where, in my case it's a desktop, that'll be where it exports this out. So you simply go render and render animation, and you'll have this nice loopable rendered animation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this free part series. I know it's been a little bit quick, a little bit in depth, but sometimes these things can be a little bit hard to share with people and explain, like when I kind of do a recreation of a scene that I previously did. So I hope somebody was able to appreciate this. And if you do get stuck, I hope you can just look over it again and figure some things out. And like I said, these blend files will be available on my Patreon. So you guys can check that out. It's also a great way to support the channel. So I'd love to see what you make with this. If any of you are able to follow along with this and actually make this, um, it'd be really awesome to see um, some of the, how you can improve upon it, make it a little bit better. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. And I really do appreciate all of the views and support that I've been getting. Stay safe.